very good morning friends today we are going to describe the calculations of critical inductance and capacitance of any dc to dc converter or chopper that is myself king shuk let's proceed further in today's we are going to describe the critical inductance and the capacitance of chopper and we have taken the box chopper as an example so what we will discuss today your uh, this brief recap definitely then the calculations of the critical inductance the calculations of the critical capacitance and significance how they are significant to a box chopper let us proceed further very good morning friends today we are going to discuss the calculations of finding the critical inductance and capacitance of dc to dc chopper today we are just taking the box chopper as a reference but you can do with any type of chopper the same strategy myself kingshuk majundar let proceed further today's discussion we make a brief recap of the box chopper first then proceed with the calculations of finding out the critical inductance then we go for the finding out the calculation strategy to the capacitance and try to find out the significance of these two parameters in the chopper and then reference let's make a brief recap of box chopper it is a simple circuit of a box chopper this is a dc source voltage and this is a switch it may be a mosfet may be igbt or anything it is a free field diodes there and this is the inductance and this is the polarized capacitor and this is the load for the sake of simplicity we have assumed it is a purely a resistive load you can take any arbitrary load and make the calculations but here for the sake of simplicity of the mathematical calculation we assume it has a only resistive load how it will operate this switch will be operated in a very high frequency switch on and off on and off like that the range of your uh your 20 uh, kilo hertz to your 200 kilohertz why 20 kilohertz is a lower limit because the human audible uh, noise frequency is this and why not more than 200 kilohertz because the emi noise is more dominant after this switching frequency now it will operate i think you can recap the concept of the box chopper now let's see what is the inductor voltage during this operation this is the inductor voltage and the inductor current profile of this box chopper the ts is the total switching that's mean the time period of the switching it has a t on time during which the switch is behaves like a closed contacts and t off when the switch behaves like a open switch now this is the current profile and this is the voltage profile during the turn on process the voltage across your inductor is this and during the off process this is the voltage across the inductor what is the current current will be rising in nature in this zone up to this t on time and here it is a t off time it will be again in a t falling nature here we have assumed almost a boundary condition where at each cycle the inductor current just touch the zero 
here you may find one new word the CCM that is called your continuous conduction mode and there is another mode is in your chopper that is your DCM that is called your discontinuous conduction mode. What is the significance? In the CCM it is said that the inductor current will never be a zero in any cycle in any period of time. That means there is some non-zero current is always exist in the inductor. That is the strategy. Why in a steady state? Because in case of your transition there are some ripples and other uh, your uh, you can go through the control system then the open loop buck chopper is nothing but a and uh, your uh, having a overshoot then some damping then it will be settled down. That is mean it is a control system point of view we are not talking about it is in a steady state control st uh, condition and we have to talk about here. Now let us proceed what will happen? We know the VL the inductor voltage is nothing but L into di dt. Now let us see only the T on time what is my VL? VL is this and L into di di what is that? The change of your current and the change of your time. So what is your I? So this now what is the change in the current? Let us see the picture. Here in the picture we can see during this turn on time what is this is your del T right. This del T is nothing but your T on time uh, forget about the capital T on and small T on they are the same. This is the equation. Now again during the turn off process this is the equation and time del T become your T of time. Now let us proceed further. Now in the steady state operation in CCM the boundary current is a half of the inductor peak current. Now here I have write the average current is equal to half of the peak equal to I naught. How can it come in? Let us move again to this picture. Now look at here. This is a nothing but a triangle right. This is the triangle another triangle. Now look this angle and this angle is the same and this arm, this arm and this is the common. So you can say this is a similar triangle right. So symmetry is there. So we can say this is the midpoint of this two session one. Second thing the height this arm and this arm will be the same. Now if this is the total change is your del i then it is your average this one is the average current always exists. So that is why we have put this type of equation that your this del i is nothing but a upper boundary minus of lower boundary is equal to 2 of your i naught current. Now using this equation we can see this is our condition right this is the condition solve it now it is a come to the l l we have taken as the condition has been implied so it is for the calculations of the l critical so then you solve it you are getting the r then the l critical for the bark chopper it, you, after resolving this issue is this. Uh, recap that the output voltage is the D is a T on time is this and your duty ratio D is nothing but this and V naught and I naught equal to R you are getting this equation. This equation is the equation for the critical inductance of a buck chopper in CCM. Now we have calculated the critical inductance of the buck chopper right. Now we have another difficulties that is the calculations of the critical capacitance. Let us move further. Now we know the average voltage is nothing but a half of your del Vc of V0. That is mean the average voltage is a whatever may be the capacitance voltage has been changed that is half in a steady state. 
Now the basic fundamental equation is the, uh, the charge Q is equal to C into del V. That means partial derivative of this. Then we have assumed that the capacitance is a constant. Then the del Q can be find it out like this. How? Then again move to this figure. What is your del Q? Charge is stored in the capacitor where in this zone. From here you can get the del Q. So it is nothing but a triangle. To find out the area of a triangle is nothing but your half into base into your height. So what is your base? Base is equal to your half of this length. Already we have talked about from this similarity of these two triangle, this one and this one. This is a midpoint. So we can take this is nothing but your T on by two. Again, from this tri this triangle and this triangle. Just a minute. Yeah this triangle and this triangle we can say this is the midpoint of this total distance that means this one also the t of time divided by your 2. So if you sum up them then your t on plus t of divided by 2 is nothing but your t s by 2. This is your best slam. What is height? Look at it here. What is total? These are, uh, uh, let me change the color of the pen. So, the it is coming from here to here. And this is again the midpoint. So, total change is nothing but a your current change, lower limit current and the upper limit of the current here in this case. So, it is uh, lower limit to upper limit is your I2. I2 divided by your 2 is a height. So, that is why that your area of the triangle is nothing but a accumulations of the charges. The Q is your half of your height and into base. Now you can do this, transfer it 2 to 2 is a 2 to the power Q, so 1 upon 8 and del I. Now remember we have used the critical inductance formula, formula number 11, we can put this form of critical uh, your del i, then you get this equation. Already we know that from the equation 26, if you use, then it is be resolved like this. Now, if this is a one of the very significant equation. Why it is so? Because here we found that the, the voltage ripple the voltage ripple, if it is in a form of your percentage, it is called your percentage of voltage ripple. When designing aspect, this ripple should be as minimum as possible. Now, this is the equation. Now, there is another two very significant terms of your cutoff frequency Fc. This is the formula and your switching frequency. If you put these two things in your this above equation, you will find this equation for your voltage ripple. Now look at here that the voltage ripple in this case is depending on the cutoff frequency and the switching frequency. Right. Now here the load is not significant. That means the voltage ripple is independent of the load. It depends mainly the what is the cutoff frequency and what is the switching frequency of the chopper. Right. So your L critical let us, this is uh, has been solved for your voltage ripple. Now, what is a, uh, your capacitance in a critical scenario? Now, you put this equation, you will find this and after resolving, you will find at here. Now, again, it is shown that the load has not any impact on the finding out the critical capacitance. So, how to find out the critical capacitance? Uh, find out first the critical inductance, then find out the critical capacitance. That means if in a question you ask to calculate the critical capacitance, then you first of all you have to calculate the critical inductance, then and then only you can find out the critical capacitance. Right. Now, let us find out the significance of this all the equation. Choose the your 
this L critical depending on the load and duty and the switching frequency. The choosing of your L critical is depending on the load, duty cycle, uh, duty ratio and the switching frequency. That means if you find out the equation number 13 the, for the light load that is the higher value of the resistance, the L critical will be the higher. For a higher switching frequency, the lower value of the L critical can be needed. So, choice, choosing of your L that should be greater than your L critical value and it must not be three times more than your this L critical. Why? In a control system point of view, whenever you introduce an inductor in a circuit that nothing but a increment of the inertia of the circuit. If the inertia is a more then the your settling time rise time will be the more that means the system is more sluggish. The control system point of view it is a not a good uh, system at all. You have to improve its system performance. So that is why the whenever you choose any inductor for any uh, designing of any chopper the for this case the it should not be more than three times of the L critical for a particular switching frequency. Now your this switching frequency must be greater than your FC at least the 10 times for the better control and the less voltage ripple right. And uh, if you plot the Bode plot in your buck chopper you can find out that the switching frequency should be greater than this uh, range. Whenever there is a, your, uh, your Bode plot, you will find there is a, some notch will be coming in case of your Bode plot regarding this issue. So, that is not our cup of tea for today. So, that is a completely a strategy for your designing of your chopper in your control system. So, we are not discussing right now today. So, then the duty, duty also make a very significant role on your voltage ripple. And whenever you design any buck chopper that duty ratio must be less than your 0.4 right in a CCM. And the switching frequency make a huge impact on the converter characteristics. So, uh, we have uh, um, create a circuit in your LT spice and we have observed two different um, switching frequency. One is at your 5 kilohertz and the same circuit is observe the response of the year 150 kilohertz and this is this simulation has been done through your LT spice is a free uh, open source uh, freeware software and you can download the this extrudable file or this particular file from this GigHub's uh, link. Now come to the response of this uh, circuit. Now it is observed clearly, look at here, the blue line is for 150 kilohertz whereas the green is for your 5 kilohertz. Now look the same circuit is having a lot of oscillation, a lot of oscillation, a lot of oscillations whereas the blue lines 150 kilohertz is less, a very less amount of oscillations among itself, right. So this is the scenario. So, if someone is interested can go to the your GigHubs and download those file and enjoy the circuit uh, simulation or do can uh, you can do by your own. Now, these are the books you can prefer and I am preferably the Nedbon books it is a bible of your power electronics and also you go for the Rashid books and for those who are in um, looking for the gate exam only so they can also go for the PS Bimra book. Thank you for today's. Uh